Online privacy is becoming more of a topic in mainstream media these days, and I feel like if you asked someone what they knew about privacy, they would probably mention Facebook or Google or ad blockers or maybe even something about a VPN. But the truth is your first mistake was clicking on this video because the government's now watching you talking about them. <laughs> no, the truth is just that privacy is way more complicated than the social media websites we use, the software that we have running on our computer or our phones. In today's world, everything is connected and we've gotten used to sharing all of our information. Big, big companies like Google have literally made it their business to make free products that you almost can't live without in exchange for your information. We have a Gmail slash Google account that we use to sign into other websites. We carry their devices in our pockets with GPS location data. All of these things are connected to our credit card purchases and deliveries that we use online so we can check out faster. And I don't blame you. It's just become normal. I don't think a lot of people think about it. I'm not saying that that's right. I'm just saying that it's normal. I didn't pay attention to all of this privacy stuff until maybe four or five years ago when I purchased a ticket from a business email and then suddenly I was getting alerts on my personal phone about my flight that was coming up. And some people might find that convenient, but for me, it was a bit of a wake up call. Because I had my business email and my personal email both on the same device and it was sharing a calendar, it sort of just synced everything up. And I, and I should have known that. It just was something that I wasn't paying attention to. And I suppose that was the moment where I realized some of these companies know everything about me. And it started a four or five year journey into the realm of privacy and security. And it has not been very straightforward. I've made a lot of mistakes along the way, but honestly, that's how you learn, right? And I'm hoping that this video will at least give you a guide or give you some encouragement that it is possible to move towards online privacy and anonymity. Hopefully this will be helpful. So the first thing I would do is really consider why you want to be private or an industry term might be something like examining your threat model, which for our purposes is kind of a fancy way of saying what are you worried about and what are your goals going to be to fix it? I know it feels kind of cheap to include something like figure out why you want to be private is the first step, but let me explain my thought process here. Why or how you think people may be looking for you or your general privacy goals become really important when assessing what steps you should take in order to combat that. So suppose you are dating online or you're using something like Tinder. Do people use Tinder? I don't know. <laughs> and when you make this online dating profile, you realize that you used your real name, your location, and some identifiable stuff on your profile. And then you start texting someone that you've connected with, and you realize that if you search for your name and phone number, everything about you shows up online. In a scenario like that, you might not have to do everything that I talk about in this guide. It might be as simple as being more conscious about what you do and making some habits. Maybe when you create your Tinder profile, don't use your real name. We'll talk about stuff like that. But let's say you're trying to apply for jobs online. You're just about to start finishing college or something. And you realize that if you search for your name again, everything about you, all these pictures of you partying online start to show up and you're thinking, I don't know if I want my personal employers to be able to find all of this. Maybe you're being targeted by an ex or you're about to be involved in a lawsuit. Maybe your company's going public. I don't know. This isn't something that I can really answer for you, but it's certainly something to think about. I'm going to do my best to go through some steps that will help you cover a bunch of those different situations and in general make it so it's not so easy to find your information publicly online. This video isn't why you should be private, it's how you can start changing things and working towards being more private in your life. Now, if you're trying to be a complete ghost, like a full 100% detached from society private ghost, this video might not really help you. As someone who's sort of explored that option, I can tell you it's very complicated and pricey and somewhat unrealistic for someone who has friends and family outside of the online world. And now there are some possibilities and some things you can do, but it becomes very limited and it takes a lot of time and lawyers 
and money. Again, this video is not about that. All right, step number two or one, depending on how you look at it, is to take stock of everything. All of your accounts, the phone numbers that you've shared, all of your social media profiles, an exhaustive list of all of the stuff that exists about you online or all of the companies and places that you've given your information to. And this might be impossible. You might not really know everything because of course there are companies who share your data with third party companies and you're not going to track all that stuff down. But I would at least start writing down what you know. Maybe make some kind of a spreadsheet that's not Google Docs that lists the website, the username, and whether or not they have things like your address, your credit card information, your phone number. Assume that all of these have your location data and that they are selling, sharing, or otherwise have been breached in this information is publicly online. It might help to search through your Gmail or whatever email account you use for something like welcome or registered or thanks for joining. And you'll start to see some of those accounts that you created years ago. Try searching for yourself online, whether it's Google, Yahoo, whatever it is, maybe try a couple different search engines for this purpose. Use your name, name plus address, maybe your usernames, anything that you think is really easily attached to you online, just start searching for it. This list is probably going to be long and it's part of the reason why I would encourage you to do it. When you take it all in, you'll realize just how much data you've shared and how much of it might correlate. Things connect, you use the same usernames or emails. Armed with your list in hand, we would move on to step number three, which is arguably the most important. Again, this is a very complicated topic, but I would say the third step is to isolate and compartmentalize all of this information. When you look at your list, you'll start to see things connect. As I mentioned, you're going to see that you used the same username on like 15 different websites. You see, you use the same email all over the place. You're already giving out your credit card information to dozens and dozens and dozens of companies. If you want to be more private or anonymous online, you have to start breaking these connections. And I mean, using different services and different devices where data points don't cross. And, and it might seem kind of annoying or inconvenient, but that's a good thing. <laughs> this is how you fight against services tracking and knowing everything about you. Because your email is unique or your username is likely unique, it can be used to cross-reference and connect everything. So if your social media account and all of your pictures are using the same email, as your GPS map data history on your Google account from Google Maps and your cat lovers forum post and your Reddit posts, all of these things suddenly can be linked together. If you don't believe me, check out something like haveibeenpwned.com, type in your email address and look at all of the times that your data has been breached. This is normal. It happens. And what I'm saying is you have to anticipate it ahead of time. Let's say that as a family, we've decided that we would take on a complete whim, mind you, a trip to uh, uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and we go on Google while we're signed in to Chrome and we search for cheap flights to Louisville. And all of a sudden we get a bunch of results. We start looking up different attractions in the area, start making a little bit of an itinerary. We're having a good old time. And Google now at this point thinks, all right, this guy's probably trying to take a trip to Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> the next day we wake up and we go on our phone. And even though it's a completely different device than we used before, Google's showing us ads for flights and attractions in Louisville, Kentucky. And we've kind of got used to that, but why? It's because Google thinks or maybe knows that you're considering going there and advertisers want to buy that information so they can sell you stuff and you might be okay with that, but just follow me. Now, when you book your flight and your rental car and your hotel and you use your Gmail account, Google knows and will start to put that in your Google calendar for you that you've committed to going to Louisville, Kentucky. 
It knows the dates, it knows the times, it probably knows how many passengers, how big your family is, all that type of stuff. And you're going to see that the ads change at this point because all of your accounts are in Google's hands. And I'm not trying to paint this like Google's the only one that does this. It's just an example. Every little thing you do and the more data points you give them when you search things, when you use their calendar, when you use their email, it helps them paint a better picture of what the reality is, of what's actually going on. But ultimately this means, and I I guess the summary of step three here. You need to start using different emails, phone numbers, usernames, and information for different segments of your life and different websites and things that you use. Look at that list you made originally and say, how could I start segmenting or blocking these things out? Maybe I just have a family section and a shopping section, gaming, school, work. So the next time you decide to sign up to some random cat lovers forum website, maybe you don't use the username that you always use. Maybe you don't use the Gmail account that you always use. You use something unique. You use something different or you say, gosh, I guess I don't have to be. I love cats for 2069 everywhere. And that sort of leads into step number four, which would be utilizing masked or burner accounts maybe consider different aliases. And now I'm not a lawyer, so maybe consider talking to somebody. And some of you might not feel comfortable with doing this, but I look at it sort of like a username, Kit Boga. That's not my name. And if you've played a game like World of Warcraft or whatever, you probably didn't type in your name, Bernice Anders, when you signed up. Oh, oh, uh, okay, maybe you did. When you go onto some website, cause you just have to buy that product, whatever it is, that cool new, what do people buy? Uh, iPhone cover thing that you saw. You don't have to give them all of your information. I mean, why do you have to give them the, your legal name? In my experience, again, I don't know if it'll work for you. I've had so many things shipped to PO boxes or my personal address without using my real name like whatever, Luke Skywalker does. But I've had stuff shipped to Paul Bunyan. They don't, I paid for it and they're gonna ship it to Paul Bunyan and it shows up. Again, it might not work for you. I'm just trying to get the gears turning in your head when you think about some of this stuff. I'm starting to feel like these steps aren't really steps. They're just a bunch of different ideas that play into each other. And, and maybe that's a good thing. But when you think about segmenting things or or blocking all of the connections in between that list you made originally. What would it look like if you used a different phone number for, for each area of your life? Maybe consider using sort of a throwaway phone number, or if you want to get a little bit more serious, check out something like my sudo. You can have VoIP numbers going straight to your phone. For payments, what about having a separate credit card or using cash or even gift cards for payment? I'm laughing, but I, I have paid with gift cards like I've paid cash for gift cards it feels weird because of everything with the scammers I do on my channel but I have used gift cards uh as a form of payment something like privacy.com or, or different masked credit cards could work something I learned from the privacy security and OSINT podcast and again no one's a lawyer here so think about this but when you have a credit card you can add secondary users to the account so for me, when I got married, I added my wife to my account and I ultimately am responsible for all those payments. It's tied to my name and my social security number. But if I were to add a secondary account under the name Luke Skywalker, they wouldn't really care and they'll send me the credit card and it will work. At the end of the day, I'm responsible for paying it. I'm not opening up a new line of credit under the name Luke Skywalker and pretending to be this person. It's just that when I go to the store and I'm swiping my card or I go online, now I can say Luke Skywalker instead of my actual name. I would consider using a VPN and logging out of a lot of your browsers. Maybe stop using Google for search and use something like DuckDuckGo. At the end of the day, you want to limit the amount of information you're sharing at all times. The next part would be cleanup. For some of you, this might be really fun. For others, this can be a chore that lasts for a really long time. And depending on your threat model or your goals, you might have to sort of just ditch everything and start over. And I know that can sound crazy or unrealistic. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. If everything in that list you created was publicly available online and it's involved in a bunch of data breaches, it can be very hard to get rid of it and escape it. And that might look like getting a new phone, a new laptop, a new house. I don't know. Again, that's a little bit more of a drastic or extreme measure. 
I don't think everybody needs to do something like that. So you might be able to just start logging into all those accounts that you made, set things to private, change your username, change some of that public information, and then go back to Google, Yahoo, or wherever the results showed up and say, hey, this doesn't exist anymore and they'll remove it. It might take some time and effort, and you might be able to go to all those random directories that say your name and your phone number and stuff, and go to the bottom and click remove, and they'll remove it. It just takes time and effort, and it's not very fun, but it is possible. And I'll, I'll give you a link in the description to some resources about that. An example would be something like if you had a cat lovers forum account that has your real name and location, pictures of your cats in your house, and you're kind of concerned about that, don't just delete that account. Log in, change the name, change some of the information, tell Google and Yahoo that it doesn't exist anymore, and set all of that to be private if they have that option. Although that technically might exist, in servers somewhere on the cat lovers forums backups. You could hope that it doesn't get breached and at least the public results, people can't easily find it online. So if they're chatting with a hot babe named Bernice Anders that lives in LA and they decide to Google them and they see the cat lovers forum post, when they click it, now it's gonna say see more butts located in Manitoba. There you go. I guess the last thing I would say in all this is that you're gonna have to form some new habits you don't need to share everything online. Think about sharing the absolute minimum required. I wouldn't do that with the government, by the way. Like if a police officer pulls you over or something, you're still gonna have to give them a license. That's a whole other topic. I'm just, again, talking about your general online privacy. Think about how inconveniences for you can actually be a strength. Don't log in with the same username, same password. Don't OAuth with everything. And remember that it's always on. You're gonna have to start doing this all the time moving forward, because if at any point you start deciding, ah, eh, you know what, this is kind of lame, I'm just gonna keep using my same usernames on this chunk of websites and this chunk of websites, eventually it can be used to link back to you. And again, I'm not saying that you have to have a completely separate email and phone number and stuff for literally every single account. I was suggesting maybe segmenting things Maybe you have a shopping alias and sort of bucket and you have a home and family bucket and a work and a hobby and, and you think about it that way. And while it might not be possible to be 100% completely anonymous in every single way, I can say that working towards this and using some of these steps and habits moving forward will help you be more anonymous online. Thanks for watching and if you liked this, let me know. Uh, maybe I can make some more videos like it.